We now turn to a study on scrolling, mm. something we do a little bit too often, yeah, I think. Yeah, we do. According to a new survey, the average smartphone user scro scrolls the equivalent of 78 miles a year. That is three marathons, and it may be good exercise for your fingers, but as Meg Oliver reports, there is evidence that it could be hurting your brain. Katie Page Rosenberg, a freshman at the University of North Carolina, Asheville. Two successes, two failures. Recently realized what too much scrolling was doing to her. How many hours were you spending on your phone? Oh, God, probably like nine. Nine I, hours? I was just kind of constantly on it. You may have heard stories like hers before. I wasn't able to focus because I would have to take out my phone every couple of minutes. But now you can actually see the science behind it. Smartphones have wide reaching changes all over the brain and specifically it grows here and it shrinks there. Psychiatrist Brent Nelson is applying this new science at Newport Healthcare, which has mental health treatment centers for teens across the country. This is a brain that's addicted to a smartphone. These are MRI images from a recent study in Korea. All the red indicates increases in brain activity, the effects of smartphone addiction. Do you want your brain to be this colorful? You don't. Why? Well, because this is showing where the brain is working extra hard compared to a non-addicted brain when asked to do actually a pretty simple task. Addicted smartphone users' brains were so colorful, so active, it made them less attentive and more easily distracted, what's now informally called brain rot. What does that look like in real life? Yeah, let's take uh, school, for example. You're sitting in class and you're trying to focus. They're going to be looking around, not attending to what the teacher is trying to teach them. Dr. Nelson says emerging research points to even greater risks. We're just starting to see these changes and we know they're connected to behavioral changes, depression, anxiety. The dangers are, are hiding in there. Social media had really influenced me in a lot of ways. TikTok would kind of push these videos of people popping an edible before school. And I was like, if I do this, maybe I'll be cool. And I started self-medicating. To deal with that, last year she checked in to a treatment facility. If you hadn't gone to treatment, where would you be today? I don't think I'd be here. It was really bad. Katie had to give up her phone in treatment. There, she found other outlets from drawing to playing guitar that helped rewire her Gen Z brain. The key, perhaps, analog antidotes reminiscent of another generation. Playing in the dirt, drinking from the hose, sort of the Gen X kind of mentality um, is shown to actually allow folks to recover, to feel better, to, to, to make it easier to kind of go about their day. In short, it's good to stop scrolling and start strumming. For I in America, I'm Meg Oliver in Asheville, North Carolina. Nice to see her yeah. making a breakthrough. Ironically, we are going to ask you to pull out your phone and scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen if you want to participate in today's chat. Mike and Maria, like the urge to scroll nowadays is super real. So strong. I mean, I think everyone can identify with that a little bit of that addiction of wanting to look at your phone. I know mm -hmm. I can. I think of this as like junk food. If I don't have it in my house, I'm not going to eat it. So the decision really needs to be made at the grocery store. Same thing with my phone. Okay. If it's not next to me, I'm not going to look at yeah. it. Or if social media apps are not on my phone, which they are not anymore, I'm oh. not going to look at them. Whoa. Okay, interesting. Okay. Can I tell you the average American checks their phone 144 times a day. Okay. That's once every 10 minutes. And like you're saying, that, like, checks, out. that checks out, especially during the work week. Uh -huh. But that is an interesting point because I've noticed that's really helpful for me, kind of putting it down on the weekends. Now, it's hard mm -hmm. when my friends try to text me, you yeah. know, to like check in or go grab a coffee or something. But it is nice to detox when you're able to. Or putting on do not disturb. I know that's helpful when I need to really get something done at work and I don't want to be distracted by social media. Yeah. I forget Do about that. 60% yep. of Americans admit that they are addicted to their phone and the average is about four hours a day. My question, I, I'm curious to know, I mean, I, I understand how addiction works. How many people are unhappy with that addiction? Some people are right. maybe happy with it, but I bet you the majority of people that say that are probably unhappy mm -hmm. with how much time they're spending. Can I say too that people are also nervous to be 
away from their phones. We see that 76% of people say they feel nervous if they don't know where their phone is. Mm -hmm. And 44% said they don't think they could go a full day, a full 24 hours without their phone. Some people sleep yeah. next to their phone. I you know, do. it's the first thing yeah. they look at when they wake up. And so, yeah. Sounds like White Lotus. Right. It's a plot, <laughs> plot yeah. point on White yes, Lotus right, right now. We are going to take your phone. <laughs> take yes. your phone.